Welcome one and welcome all. We're here live on Berry Flow Upstream number 93. We are here on April the 3rd, 2016. We just helped BlackBerry close last quarter, Q4 2016. The quarter actually ended in February, but results were re recently posted. I'm here with our awesome cast and crew. We got Darius Stokes. He's been uh, MIA for a little bit, but we got him back to talk some smack with us tonight. How you doing, Darius? Glad to be back. Glad to see you guys too. I'll hear you guys at least. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have Brandon Orr, who I think sounds like he's doing dishes right now. I'm not really sure what Brandon's doing. Oh, I'm eating. <laughs> I'm eating, man. Uh, I was wondering what that was. I didn't see like, any like microphone movement going, so I didn't think you could hear me. I'm new. Yeah. Uh, yeah, nice to see everybody again. Always good to have you, man. Going hard in the paint as always. We're here with Alex Bass of Cyberbytes Inc. as well. How you doing, Alex? Good. Good, good, good. Doesn't change from week to week, so kind of like, good. Like BlackBerry's acquisition, like that good or, or <laughs> better? Uh, and last, but, last but not least, we have Blaze, editor in chief of Rat Crackberry. How you doing, CB? Oh, it's snowing out, and it's very depressing considering it's like spring. So I'm like, yeah, in my apartment. And I'm just like, that was here too. This sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a whiteout here right now. Yeah. It'll, like, it'll all be gone in, like, two days. It's just being annoying. Yeah, it's just being a pain in the butt. And I'm noticing, like, friends who, like, live close to me, their power is going out. So if my power goes out, then you'll know what happened to me. <laughs> but other than that, I'm good. Thanks for asking. I appreciate it. <laughs> if Blaze drops out, it's actually because BlackBerry is incredibly boring today. <laughs> That's actually why you fell asleep. <laughs> no, we actually have a lot to talk about. I'm kind of excited. I'm glad we took a little hiatus last week. Uh, thank you guys for continuing to hop back on with us. Uh, we wanted to celebrate Easter, you know, spend time with our friends and family. But coming back, we see the Priv wins a Red Dot Award for product design in 2016. Mm -hmm. This this is one of those things that like happens for every BlackBerry device and it's always for the same category. So I wonder if like BlackBerry owns this category as like a, <laughs> is, this, is this the Red Dots like kind of like crevice award where BlackBerry like seeps through? Uh, I know like the LG G5 got like 35 different awards for different things, but none of them were for product design. What do you guys think about the Priv and these kinds of accolades? I mean, better than nothing, right? No, I you know, I honestly would say this probably stands out more than anything. Obviously, the past part, I feel like that that deserved one. Um, I don't necessarily know if, like, I don't know, the Z10 at the time, the Z30, like, all, but, you know, with this, with the sliding functionality and the fact that it's as thin as it is, um, I think this deserves something. Like, this is literally something that hasn't been on the market to this extent. Uh, people use my phone, they can't even tell there's a sliding mechanism in there, and I think that is a big deal within itself. So many people use this phone without even knowing there's a, a physical keyboard under there, and I think that's pretty, you know, a big deal. So I think it's deserved, but I guess we've had this discussion before. Every Yeah, it comes down to like comes how, out. How, how valuable is that Red yeah. Dot Award? Like, does it actually mean anything at the end of the day, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes me want to buy two more peribs. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, do these kinds of awards, do they really have anything substantial to add? Or is it, or is it just kind of like nice to hear, nice to have, kind of in pocket? Let me, let me put it this way. Uh, I had a friend who worked at an architecture firm who won an architecture award, and he literally did nothing. Just put his name down and like submitted like a final report from a project he worked on, and he won it. And like they didn't really put any effort into it. And, and essentially, that's what happens in architecture and design stuff. I mean, there's so many awards. There's like thousands of them. And they almost kind of just give them out like candy. And that's what I feel with a lot of these awards, too. I mean, it's good to have. It's better than not having one, right? But at the end of the day, I mean, there's so many of these awards that get put out. I don't really think it it it, it really affects much other than, you know, it's nice to get kudos every now and then for some stuff that you do. Yeah, and the other, the other side of that is that sometimes you actually submit them. Like, you pay to have your, let's just say, for the, for the sake of it, you pay to submit your device to actually be judged. You know what I mean? It's kind of like one of those scenarios. It's not, it's not like, in some cases, it's not like they just randomly chose your device because they felt as though that it was a good device. It was yeah. literally because you paid to have it submitted to have it judged. So. Yeah. 
do I get one? Like, I want a red dot award. Like, what do I have to sign up? S- send me send <laughs> me an email, and I'll uh, I'll reply back with some of that info. Blaze put out a really uh, awesome tweet that I want to get to a little bit later with some good good facts. But what I want to transition to is a closer look at the- <laughs> we're gonna get there, Blaze. Your your tweets are valuable, I promise. Uh, you know, a closer look at that BlackBerry radar asset tracking system. We actually saw that product launched officially at that trucking show. I think it was in Kentucky. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but really interesting stuff, and I think it kind of can hold the brunt of our discussion today, aside from some of the OS news. What do you guys think? I mean, we haven't really had a lot of time to talk in depth because the product hadn't been announced yet, right, in full, so we really didn't know the depth and scope of all of it, but BlackBerry with this radar asset tracking system is jumping into waters that are kind of congested, right? A lot of players in that space already. What do you guys think as a vertical for BlackBerry in the IoT domain? Is this something that you think BlackBerry is actually going to start making some money off of, or is it kind of more beta, piloty, and kind of testing the waters? Well, I mean, for now, it seems that it, you know, it's still stuck in that sort of beta stage. The the 110 percent full rollout won't actually happen until the summer. But for now, I think it's something that you know they they've obviously been working on it for a while. Um, you know, we've heard about it for pretty much since like last, I think it was last November they started the actual beta trials at the end of the year. Um, they started the beta, uh, but you know it, it's something. Even even though it is congested, it is a, a somewhat congested market for them to actually be into. It does seem as though that they they have a handle on it. Like they've they've been following um, all of the all of the programs that are currently available and trying to improve upon them and taking different paths than what are already out there. So hopefully it'll be something that is actually innovative. You know when they fully get around to to pushing it out. I mean. You know, having it in beta stages is always interesting to see, but it, it really, it really won't be fully recognized until they actually push it out, and you know, they start possibly sharing some numbers when it comes down to how much they're making off of it, and you know, how many people are actually using it. But uh, everything looks like it's off to an interesting start, at least. I found it really interesting that they went kind of ground floor at a trucking show to kind of release this too. It shows that, like like Blaze said, they've been tracking this for a while. They understand what they're jumping into, which is good, right? BBM meetings, don't think they knew what they were jumping into, right? (laughs) But this seems like a lot more uh, in line with kind of their goals as they head toward this, this look at the IoT realm and what they can do. Uh, D- Darius, in terms of asset tracking, I know obviously the military has asset tracking. Do you think BlackBerry can really carve a niche here, or are the players kind of just too substantial for them to really even make headway? You no, know, I don't. I don't think it's really a, a market for BlackBerry to like not you know kind of make their footprint in. I, I just you know of course you know as we already spoke, they're not clearly they're not the first ones in you know this whole perspective of uh, you know asset tracking in terms of goods and where they move to, uh, just end-to-end uh, tracking. But I think what BlackBerry can really do with this is, I, I think the question is, is how can BlackBerry differ, um, differentiate from the other, uh, you know, companies that are already, you know, in this market, so to speak? Um, and where can they, what can they do in, like, the near future in order to kind of, you know, revolutionize it, so to speak? Because, I mean, we're in a day and time where, you know, accountability of goods and product and where it's going to, you know, people getting into all sorts of things. Uh, I just know, like, you know, how often does it happen that, so to speak, with things from Amazon, it doesn't show up to your doorstop. You know, and, like, it, those are kind of things that I think BlackBerry really has to start looking into. As you mentioned, I thought was a good point, is that they started on the ground at a trucking show. So they want to affect immediately where they know they have to kind of put that foot in the door, at, right? Mm-hmm. And I think moving forward, as Chris had mentioned, you're not going to see it immediately, but I think in the near future, because they've done so much, uh, you know, work prior to, that I I really do think they can make a, a difference um, in this market. I really do think they can um, see something happen. Uh, you just have to really kind of wait for those numbers to come out to see where the profitability is. But um, I don't think it's too wide of a market for BlackBerry to kind of get into is to where it's like, and eh, let's try it. I think they have something going. I think they know what they want to do. They just have to get the uh, consumers on their side that will want to use their product 
and they have to really prove to those consumers that you know, uh, pretty much using our services that you know we're beyond the best. We can do and offer so much more for you. So I, I really do think they can do something with uh, the service that they're providing. Particularly, also, I, I just want to clear something up. A lot of people seem to think that this is where where they decided to go ahead and. and announce it during a trucking event, they thought, a lot of people thought that it was just necessarily for trucking. It goes well beyond trucking. Anything that you can attach that box to mm -hmm. that could contain anything that, you know, and, and consumers are going to be purchasing or utilizing is what they want. That's yeah. their, their ultimate goal. Like, we're talking container ships, we're talking railroad, we're talking trucks, all of that stuff, airplanes, everything. Boats. It, it, yep. Yeah, it it wasn't solely based around the trucking industry. That was just one pinpoint start, even point for them to be able to go ahead and roll it out and say, "This is what we're doing." Right. Right. Um, so just to just to clear that up, make sure everybody's aware of that. That that opens a lot of a lot of different spaces beyond the trucking industry. Because like I to to a lot of companies, it's all about accountability, and that's what like BlackBerry is doing with for providing the services like allowing companies to really hold themselves accountable for these goods that move from point A to point B. And I also think, um, you know, with BlackBerry really jumping into this, uh, where you kind of see them start at right now, I think it's all about how, I'm trying to find the best way to put it, essentially the companies that they kind of get on board now, right, if they sit here and tell them, like, hey, look, not only are we going to allow you guys to, you know, you know, be accountable for all of your goods and where they're going um, from the time they ship to the time, you know, they arrive to wherever they're going to. We can also allow you guys to kind of, it, it kind of like mitigate it down to even this, the smallest entity, so to speak, not just one big shipment, but what, where each package can um, necessarily go to. We're making sure that, you know, once it arrives here, that we know that these people are getting X, Y, and Z. So you can track it all the way into that point. And I think yeah, it's like it's like tracking a tracking a package that right. gets delivered to your it house is. only at, on a grander scale, right. like you know what I mean, microscopic it's scale. Right. It's providing security. It's providing you know that accountability. But you know it's kind of like BlackBerry's just being that lending hand and showing these companies how they can get it done. Um, you know, and it pretty much like the easiest way. Yeah. Um, it's starting that whole IoT thing as well um, for BlackBerry and their platform, their IoT platform in general. So I, I, it has like a, a great you know upstart to it, a lot of upstart to it, so to speak, in terms of in terms of its potential. I want to hear from I want to hear from Brandon here because he's actually a transportation planner and yeah. has a lot of background in this space. So Brandon, like, tell us what you know in terms of you know this kind of shipping industry because that's really like where they're headed, right? Trucking is a, a subsection thereof for sure, as yeah. mentioned. But in this whole entire shipping industry, what kind of hassles and what kind of things is Black we're going to have to look at as they roll this out, kind of in a bigger sense? Well, the advantage is that the like the way a lot of shipping works is that they basically have kind of like a chip or something on the container, and it gets scanned at certain checkpoints, and that's where they know where the status of something is going in and out um, along the process. But the advantage about uh, with BlackBerry Radar, ideally, would be that you know you could track it along the entire way. So what happens in the trucking industry and in the transport industry is sometimes. Uh, some containers or pieces of a container will go missing. And that could be just because a lot of ports in some of these other countries aren't necessarily the most secure. You have people who steal things, uh, break into them, and things like that. Um, so the advantage of Black Bear Radar is just doing better asset management and trying to figure out exactly what's going on with each container, when it happens, exactly when it happens, and things like that. Um, but when, but touching on what Blaze said, when uh, they just happen to release this at a trucking event, containers are kind of an international standard. So one container can get filled onto a boat and it's a standard size and it can get filled onto a train and it's a standard side, size and then it can get uh, put onto a, a truck. So really, even though it's a, it was released at a trucking event, really it's these containers that can go on multimodal kind of services and be used to that effect. and, and it, that's one of the issues now with a lot of these trucking companies is that the asset management aspect of what they do isn't necessarily 21st century, um, up to the 21st century right now. And so something like BlackBerry Radar can definitely bring in some some extra help finding these efficiencies. It's just as I mentioned on a previous podcast, it's uh, 
the bad thing about the trucking industry is that a lot of it isn't these big companies that are trucking stuff. It's usually for higher services, so like trucking companies that have maybe one or two trucks, and it's it's really I, I it's going to be difficult to get those people on board. So it'll be interesting to see how this uh, goes forward. But I can definitely see a company like a Walmart or something, one of these, or a Canadian Tire or something, really organizations. Yep. What about uh, before, you? What about, yeah, go ahead, please. Before we went, uh, well, I was probably just presumably going to lead into what uh, what Alex has to say on the matter because before we actually went on air, Alex was talking about um, uh, AT and T's yeah. tracking system and how how it gets down to like a microscopic level and what the details that they can actually pull out of it, which is obviously something BlackBerry is going to be focusing on as well. So why don't you tell us? A little bit about what you were actually discussing before we went on air. Yeah, no, I mean, I this is something that obviously, like, I look at it and I watch some of the videos, and it's an interesting kind of thing. It shows like scan, it scans um, to kind of see what boxes and what things are in trucks and everything. And and I guess I, it didn't really connect with me though entirely until I realized that I was watching an episode of The Prophet where it was an ice cream kind of factory and they were delivering ice cream. And they obviously had this kind of ad within the TV show, and they were like, well, with AT&T's new integrated asset tracking software, uh, we can tell the temperature in the truck and, you know, the distance it takes to travel and things like that. And they, they brought up this situation where they're like, they called up the guy who was driving the truck, and they were like, okay, you know, the truck is at 23 degrees Fahrenheit right now, and you know, it's only going to be able to sustain that temperature for another 45 minutes, but the place you need to deliver that ice cream to is an hour and a half away, so, you know, we should not send you over there. You need to come back, and we need to get you recharged or whatever. And it kind of, that is like a real-world scenario where that's being used, and it's like, oh, that actually makes sense. But I think at, at the end of the day, um, what I'm interested by is this is such a new kind of, I mean, it's an old industry, but it's a new product for BlackBerry. So I really love the small startup companies that kind of come in and try and disrupt the industries. So if you look at a company like Prosperworks for a CRM, they've gone into something where Salesforce has just run in this industry forever. But there's this small startup, and they're just doing a really good job in taking it from a kind of different aspect, um, and it's been blowing up. So it's really nice to see a company like BlackBerry do take an industry that's kind of old and then take all of their you know, tools, QNX, and just um, security and just everything and put it together and try and disrupt an industry a little bit. So it's nice to see this, and I'm really interested to see how well it goes, uh, if it catches on at all. But I'm always, I'm always happy for the, the startups and the people trying to disrupt things. And sure, well, BlackBerry is not a startup, but this mm -hmm. is kind of... No, BlackBerry yeah. has to act like a startup. In this exactly. Yes. They I mean, need to be yes. hungry for it. <laughs> if, if you looked at the events and pictures, I mean, that was the entire team. You know, There wasn't a... Uh, yeah mass amount of people that are behind this. I'm looking into the details on AT&T's Fleet Complete, which is a family of GPS-based tracking and management solutions that collect and send information between operations, mobile workers, and fleet vehicles. Again, it seems like it's kind of lost in this temporal uh, conundrum where there's like hard-lined, hardwire modems in the vehicles, you know, and it doesn't do a lot of things outside of location and GPS. So, again, it lacks potentially some of the security focus that I think BlackBerry is going to be able to offer, heading back to what Darius was mentioning on the whole security advantage that BlackBerry has. So it is very interesting to see how they're kind of innovating in a very old, mature market, but bringing some of these smart technologies into the age of the Internet. And, you know, that's what the <coughs> Internet of Things is all about, right? Taking the dumb and making it a little bit smarter. AT&T uh, just wants to add wireless connections so that they yeah. have data yeah. accounts. They, they want to drive, they want to have wired U-verse trucks running around. <laughs> 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 so, very interesting stuff from the, the radar team. And what I want to show now is just a, a brief little video that was put up by the IoT team just talking a little bit about, um, you know, the life cycle of these different uh, radar devices. So, as you play through here, it's a pretty short video, and I can check it out on Berry Flow or on Crackberry as well. And it's kind of annoying. It's telling us we're live right now. That's annoying. <laughs> but again, we're really looking at trying to stop that, increase revenues, and create that return on investment. So you here, you can kind of see the basic overlay from device all the way to the cargo hold and the different things that it can do. So once that device is installed, as Blaze and Alex mentioned earlier on in the podcast, once it's attached to the unit of the trailer, you can measure all sorts of things. You're able to measure temperature, humidity, 
uh, I think, location, and then the status of the door being opened and the loading status with a motion sensor inside. All of that connected through a cellular LTE connection. So again, a lot of the stuff we're seeing here is stuff that's already built in phones, right? And it brings us into like a bigger conversation, right? As BlackBerry has this hardware unit, right? They they know how to build hardware. Who's to say the hardware in their future is all cell phones, right? This is basically a cell phone, right? Dumbed down, no touch screen, no keyboard, but it has a lot of the same sensors and connectivity assets that a BlackBerry handset has. So it really opens up your eyes in terms of what BlackBerry can do to stay in the hardware business, maybe not stay in the handset business long, long term if Android doesn't work for them, but they still have a lot that they can offer to these different vertical industries. So it is cool to see this kind of entire chain kind of build out for them. Do you guys have any final thoughts on how BlackBerry can continue to manage this? I mean, if you look a little bit further, here's some of that like web interface and application that you see over here is a geofence and things like that. So it's pretty robust already. What else is something you guys would like to see BlackBerry add in here? Uh, is there anything in particular? I would love like a video camera on the box, right? So if I want to see like what's going on in real time, I can do that through that LTE connection, you know, stuff like that would be kind of cool to give me that peace of mind as a shipper. Do uh, you guys have any thoughts? Yeah, I think a video camera would be definitely among the top things that I would like to see added. Yeah, I guess we shouldn't give away our innovative ideas to BlackBerry. They might just <laughs> they might just take, they might just take them and do a. I was gonna make a Pooter mobile, but, but I won't. But I won't. <laughs> so aside from that radar stuff, BBM got an update, adding support for Marshmallow, ditching some of the fees for privacy and control. Now, Alex, we have a lot to say about this. Right? Oh, we do. We but but I have an, I have an article coming on it too, so oh, that'll, that'll okay. be a follow up. I want to definitely okay. talk about it now, but I want to hear from Brandon and Darius and maybe Blaze a little bit on this. Do you find yourself now that that subscription's free using it more just because you can? I mean, now the time messages, message retraction, things like that are now free within BBM. I mean, I still use BBM pretty regularly. Uh, I don't know about you, Stokes and Brandon. I, I know we have family on there too. Do you guys use those features? And do you like that it's free? Do you think like post WhatsApp leaving BlackBerry 10 that that these features are even more of a benefit to try to get people to buy in? Like, yo, WhatsApp sucks. Come on, BBM. No, I mean, me honestly, I I only find people like you know, I'm, I'm using BBM and people use like those features, like especially like the retracting feature for the messages. It's just because like they <laughs> like had a typo or something like that. Um, and I don't know. I thought it was dumb anyways to kind of you know, uh, charge for the features that they are now for that they now became free or made free, I should say, especially when you had no advantage in the you know messaging space. Uh, to really begin with, you know, it's just like everything that you bring to this platform to BBM, it should be free. You should be doing anything to make it an advantage over the other messaging platforms and to start charging people. And I, we understand, we know why you did it. You know, you're trying to make a profit, you're trying to make revenue from the messaging service. But the point of the fact is, is that one, a lot of these things that you started doing, you did too late. Two, I really feel like you're making them free now because you probably weren't making enough money from it to begin with. So why not give it to the people for free? But it's just it was dumb from the jump. So I don't know. I'm I'm happy that they're, they're, it, uh, these features are now free. I mean, it wasn't like they were the star-studded and just standout features that no other uh, messaging platforms have. And this is just something that you know must have and. I don't know. I've never seen it as kind of like a gold mine for BBM. I mean, for BlackBerry, anyways, to make off of BBM. It just should have been features that they implemented. Let it be free. Let it just be, you know, one of the unique things of it, but, you know, not so unique, so to speak. It's just, I don't know. It was, what Darius is trying to say is he doesn't give a damn about them features. <laughs> It was retarded. I, like, I, I still don't use it. Even if it was free or if I pay for it, I still don't use it. Like, I just pay for, like, ads free because I hate ads on apps, so that's it. <laughs> well, and you have to you have to look at investors, and it's like BBM is this platform they have with, what, two, three hundred million people using it, and the question is, that's great, and it's using up server space, and it costs us money to run, 
w how are we going to make money from this? So they introduced stickers, which I'm sure a lot of people feel like stickers are really dumb, and I don't even really use stickers. Now, now there is a mess up with some stickers now. Don't 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 get on the stickers. <laughs> but we all we all buy stickers. We all do it. The thing is, is like we you have all these hundreds and millions of users, but how many of them are active? So how much money? You that's have? that's the real key. That's, that's what I said. Question, you know what I'm saying? Like that's the real question. How many of them are active, and how many of those active users are really going to pay for these features? They're not, because they probably have the other messaging platforms as well, like WhatsApp and so on and so forth that they're using. So it, it's like BBM is probably like your second or third choice when it comes to messaging if you use BBM on a regular. Um, and it, I mean, it just is what it is, especially with you know iMessaging out there now. You have all these other platforms that just come already preloaded on people's phones. They're going to use that. That's what they're going to stick to. If you use BBM now, let's just keep it 100 you probably use it because you're hanging on to those few people that you use that you communicate with through the app, and that's about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you're not you're not making new friends on you're BBM. Not. You're just yeah. maintaining the ones that you already have, which no is yeah. Yeah. no one. I brought, I brought a new I brought a new user onto BBM just the other day, but yeah. that's because I'm a control freak. But <laughs> she's looking at me right now like, yeah, you did. <laughs> I don't know if you're that bad in the past. <laughs> You're gonna be like, you talk about me, <laughs> Brandon. Talk about uh, you, you use BBM still, right? I mean, we, that's yeah. how we talk sometimes when you feel yeah. like talking to me. It's so, uh, Brandon be dropping me the green R guys. I just want to put that out there. Yeah. He be reading my shit and not responding. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, BBM is mostly for like my family, and my girlfriend, and stuff, and and you guys. Uh, when is BBM to... your grandma's messaging system nowadays? Is like that what it is? No, no, no she doesn't <laughs> message at all. Uh, <laughs> but no, like yeah, like back to Darius's point. I mean, what's up is basically I have a group of friends from university, and it's either Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp that gets used. Like for instance, the other day I had to do some field work, so uh, the guy organizing the field work just got everybody's number and started a WhatsApp group and was able to like we were all able to like send messages back and forth, and it's like. On um, BBM, if I if somebody had tried to do that, it would have been such a pain having to send pins and add each other. It would have been just a lot more of a hassle. And so, I mean, to that effect, I mean, generally, yeah, like I'm I'm not bringing in new people to BBM. It's just I like the service better than everything out there. It's just it's, I don't. It's see, a struggle to get everybody else on board with it. Yeah, I just don't see like there's nobody new I've added to my BBM list. Uh, yeah. I'd say in over a year. And I'm, su dude, yeah. I'm surprised you even got people on on WhatsApp though, because like I have the frustration of I have a lot of friends and they're just using text messaging. And yes, most of them are on iPhones, and that's why they're using text messaging. Um, but it's frustrating because like my buddy who's been on BlackBerry and BlackBerry 10, and he's been following me around with it. Like I've been pushing him. He's now considering getting an iPhone. Simply the only reason is because everyone uses iMessage around sure. him at work and and his and his girlfriend and people. So then it's like he the only person he uses BBM with is me. And he was actually paying for the privacy functionality thing because he liked playing around with it from time to time. Thank you. But like it, you it's had BBM so, alive. You the MVP. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's 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 so screwed up because like I mean I have a hard enough time getting people on WhatsApp. Like I ask people, it's like they have a billion users, but I, I have ask a hard enough time making WhatsApp. friends. Like <laughs> no, no BBM contacts. No, but, but I think the the interesting point of this conversation is that BlackBerry took a step back, looked at what their value was, and did exactly like Darius said. This shit should have been free from the jump. Yeah. To make it free. So they're a lot more receptive to that feedback nowadays as opposed to when BBM was coming up, it was this slow and painful process to kind of get it where it is now. I think right now is a perfect time for them to really catalyze what they're doing and push it forward. I mean you have PayPal in there. You have Klimps integrated in there, right? You have all these different facets, even channels still, right, as abandoned and be beleaguered as it is, is still awesome as a platform for you know that kind of communication. What I what I want to talk about now is a little bit of Alex and I testing out this new privacy feature and what we kind of came to, because Alex and I are both avid Snapchat users. Um, Alex's username can't be said on air because it's a little bit uh, savage, but what? What, um, <laughs> follow me on there. It's J M Z N V S. Um, Mine's yeah, savage, but what are you talking about? I don't want to I don't want to bring it up on, on air because you know you know you might get some creepers following you. 
and, and we don't we don't really want that. What I Alex likes creepers. <laughs> it's Alex HB guys, same as my Twitter. <laughs> it's right there on the screen for you. Yeah. That's why I figured they would like catch on with the uh, the whole our usernames are the same across uh, yeah across we're platforms. We're smart like that. We're smart like yeah. that. It's tough we, at times though. We, we plan anyway. Way. Whatever. Yeah. Back to back to back on point or. We're like so off point right now on the whole conversation, yeah. but um, you know, I was talking about BBM, and Alex and I were testing out some of these features, right? He was sending me some some less than uh, work appropriate pictures on the Times, and we were testing out some of the functionality. So when BBM's Times message feature first came out, we took a screenshot. It said, "Yo, someone took a screenshot," <laughs> right? Yeah. Just like Snapchat does, right? It's going to notify you that a screenshot's been taken. We were able to uncover that it doesn't even do that anymore on the Android version of BBM. It doesn't even let you take a screenshot. The app actually blocks screenshots from being taken. So again, repositioning that whole privacy stance, whereas Snapchat doesn't really care about your privacy, right? It's inferno messaging. It's going to disappear, and that's it. It uses social kind of norms slash anxiety for you to not take the snapshot because you know if you take the screenshot, it will notify them, whereas BBM's like, no, this was sent. As a time message, it should be treated as a time message. They don't want you to keep it in any way. Exactamundo. So with that, we were like, "All oh, right, BBM, you think you're so we know our workarounds. You, you think you think you're so, cool, you're so smart. Yeah. With Snapchat, what we'll sometimes do is download that you know that uh, phone recorder, screen recorder application, and just record our screen, take a little video. So when the cutie opens up her Snapchat. You know, you can collect a little photo or, you know, a little video of the actual snap being open to kind of get around that socially awkward screenshotted notification going out. What we found was BBM actually blocks that too. So Alex was – Alex sent – I sent uh, – did you send me or did I send you, Alex? You sent, me a, you sent me a picture. I opened up the screen recording app, and it seemed like everything was acting totally fine. Um, but then I replayed the the video that I just captured, and it just showed a black screen when I actually when it got to the point of me opening up the picture. So whatever BlackBerry does, like it just it just like overlays a black image over, and you know I was surprised because that, stop that's you guys always been in, in regards to this. Yeah. Because what devices did you actually test it on? Oh, oh, the, 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 the Priv. Just yeah. Android, Android. Go yeah. back and test it on BlackBerry 10. I bet you the results are different. Yeah, yeah. Well, we know the BB10 app sucks. So. <laughs> 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 the thing is with the with the multitasking and the way it works on BlackBerry 10, I'm sure that you could still get it to work. You know, but again, for the masses that are using this, I mean, how yeah. many people are on actual BlackBerry devices using BBM? You know, as opposed to those probably Android platform. is probably the number one. Well, mm -hmm. it it is the number one. And get, for them at least to step out of their kind of comfort zone and instead of just building it as a consumer feature, really build it in with the mentality of, okay, privacy is what we want to deliver here, it adds a different kind of value. You know, It's not just a consumer fun thing that Darius is going to ignore, right? It's something that as a business you're rolling out something like you know, you're BBM protected and you want to have timed messages and things like that in there. You can certify the security to a certain degree on certain devices, right? And that becomes another value add for BBM even outside of the consumer space, right, in the business sector, kind of as a secure enterprise, I am trying to compete out there with some of the likes of, you know, Slack and, you know, my, I, what is it now, Skype for Business, not Link anymore. So it's really interesting to see at least that BBM, at least on the Android app as we know, is able to kind of push those boundaries a little bit. And, you know, I honestly think, because I've used Snapchat quite a bit, but in terms of, like, holding a conversation on Snapchat, it's terrible. Because you go back to the conversation yeah, it's, and, and it's it all gone. disappeared. All disappeared, right? So it's like, or you know, she'll send you ha ha ha, and then you forget what you sent her. So you have no yeah. contact, no clue. Is that DJ Reyes? And she just oh, yeah. Yeah. happy birthday. Happy birthday, DJ. Happy yeah, birthday. it is my birthday today. Wow. April babies, right after Easter. <laughs> Good evening. How's it going, DJ? Not too bad. Not too bad. It's not too late over there, is it? Um, it's one forty in the morning. One. What a trooper. What a She's trooper. still celebrating her birthday. <laughs> <laughs> DJ, we were just talking about BBM's privacy and control features becoming free. What are some of your thoughts? Have you used any of those new features? I've kind of just been using the retract and edit. Yeah. Really. That's pretty much it. 
nothing else. I'm going to try it out at the beginning, but since since the update, it's just to retract a message, really to edit it. Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. And that's and that's kind of the. F- I wish it would say, you know, if you if you click the edit button instead of retract, um, I wish it just showed that you were editing it. But I guess it's really no different. I just kind of feel weird at times, like retracting a message to just simply edit a f- couple words, and then they're always like, "Wait, what did you just retract?" Like, yeah, is it, it, that's what yeah, I experienced too. Because mm-hmm. somebody somebody called me out on it. They're like, "What did you just yeah. take away from the message?" I'm like, uh, "Nothing. Uh, so, I just edited what I said, but it actually shows is retracted." And so then you it gives know, you the edited message. The way that Slack works, which I really like, is it just show if the message is edited, it just shows yeah. a little edited. But the 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 weird part is, well, if they did it in a way where it showed if it was edited, then people would probably no longer retract messages. Because, like, say for instance, if I never wanted to say, like, I sent something to my boss that I didn't want to say, retracting it is sketchy. So I would just edit it and be like, hey, what's going on? Or like, I would just edit it to be something dumb that. You know, to make them not suspicious, so I'm kind of like thrown off a little bit about what their whole thought process between edited, retracted, um, whatever if, is. If, if, well, so let's say you're doing a, a mobile transaction, right? You're going to send someone some credit card information or yeah. your address, right? They get it, they use it, you retract it, so you know it's not lingering on their device for any mm-hmm. reason, right? But you know, it plays in. If you emphasize one feature, you may de-emphasize another. So it is a kind of a balancing game for them right now. Yeah. I'm glad the features are free at the very least. I think especially with WhatsApp kind of leaving the BlackBerry camp, that it is a good thing to show goodwill and be like, you know, BBM is still a really good viable alternative for WhatsApp in a lot of cases. So yeah. I'm, I'm proud one, of them at the very least. One thing I do want to mention, it was a little change in an update that came along with this, and that is you can now select if you want to save pictures. So when you take a picture through BBM, um, I can I have it off by I have it off right now. So I take a picture through BBM, it doesn't save that picture to my Photos app, which is cool because that is actually like how Snapchat works. Like you take a picture through Snapchat, and it's not saving every single picture to your phone. Because can you imagine using Snapchat and every picture saves to your phone? You'd have all these stupid pictures. So like. They're giving you the option to treat it in a way. Say that I'm taking, you know, a picture of some confidential information that I want to send over to someone in a timed message, and I don't want this picture on my phone, and I don't want to have to go through the process to go through and delete the picture. Like that's kind of a nice option to have, so that people are using it this way. All my my BBM pictures were saved in my device, though. Yeah. Yeah. Never. That's why. Like, oh. (laughs) It's weird. Like I pulled an SD card out of a. I pulled an SD card out of like an old, old, like 8520, like an old, old curve, right? And I put it in my priv for like, just, just to see what was on it. And it, it was, they had photos archived from an old BBM group, and all of those photos are now on my priv. <laughs> so it's pretty amusing that uh, all those photos are saved. I've got photos from like when BB10 launched and stuff like that. It was pretty crazy. So. I- I just Please, like the I fact that I can know. annihilate all the messages off of James's device, so when I talk trash about Alex, he can't go tell Alex. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, those are those are always immediately screenshot. Yeah, so. he's, he's the word Alex, and you don't know because you didn't you didn't time to message it. You know, and as well as that, it's that private chat feature as well. You know, it's not so much just that time message. I like time pictures as well. That's super fun. And again, in terms of like a actual holding an actual conversation, it's so much easier to do it on. BBM because it's an actual messaging client, you know, as opposed to Snapchat where stuff just gets lost and you're not sh- sure what's really going on in conversations unless you're actively in them. So it is kind of a, one of those things. I do like that Snapchat has that kind of top down that says when they're typing, whereas yeah. on BBM I can see that in the app, but I can't see that like from a drop down notification, which is, you know, here neither here nor there. Yeah, so, I don't know how I feel about that. I've, I've noticed that though. I, I don't I don't even know why I'm saying anything because it's it it's something that's interesting to me but I don't know how I feel like do I prefer it do I wish BBM did that uh like I, do you would you prefer that BBM did that you know, pers- yeah I, I could really care less to be quite honest yeah. it is interesting that that Snapchat decided to go ahead and roll out those you know further expanded upon chat features though yeah. Yeah, too bad they didn't work when they first came out. <laughs> <laughs> well, <Wow. laughs> so it worked. <laughs> but 
you know, it's definitely an interesting place for BBM. I hope they continue to kind of innovate on the platform and push it forward. John Chen, in an interview with Amber Canwar, said, you know, yeah. you know, we're not quite at that 100 million, right? I missed on that mark, right? Yeah, he didn't, he didn't want to give up the numbers of how, how profitable BBM had become because he said that, you know, previously he said that BBM was one of the, the points where they needed to go ahead and improve upon profitability, and then he just he basically laid out some math for Amber, and then she was like, oh, so you, you didn't meet your expectations, <laughs> which is kind of unfortunate, but, you know, that's the way it is. With all this asset tracking, you couldn't keep up with BBM stickers. <laughs> yeah, the expectations were like $100 million or something like that for and BBM profitability. So if they didn't hit that, they were, I mean, what do you think, that they're like at $50 million or $20 million? Like what? I don't I, know. I, I mean, at, at the time when I listened to the interview, I mean, you could probably figure it out by going through the math situation mm -hmm. to, to break it down and get the actual number. But when I was listening to the interview, I was, you know, not really concentrating on the actual interview itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, what it looked like was you lay out the math, work for it if you wanted to go back and actually do it. What what it looked like in terms of the numbers was what he said was if you look at the balance sheet, you'll easily see where our actual software revenues came in and how they broke down. So basically, he said about the the five hundred million that they were actually going for was their actual, you know, software and services business. Whereas the extra like, little twenty seven million that they had on top of everything was BBM, which was negligible, you know? Which for like say like a startup or something, that would kind of be a big deal. Uh, but like looking at it I mean even look at WhatsApp and what are these other companies making? You know, WhatsApp still is not making any money directly from having a billion users, aside from probably collecting data and I'm sure there's tons of data collection going on in, in WhatsApp, but yeah. realistically, wh where are these companies making money aside from like little stickers kind of things or whatever? And then where can BlackBerry make money? Is it going to be from building out user profiles and then advertising them? I feel like if you start throwing advertisements in BBM, well, you know, I'm probably going to stop using BBM. Or I mean, yes, they have like pay to remove, but like, wh where is the money should Quite it come from? Quite frankly, I don't even think WhatsApp should be considered like when, if if the conversation is revolving around profitability, let's just say it was profitability between WhatsApp and BBM. I wouldn't even consider that a realistic conversation because at this point in time, you know, WhatsApp really doesn't make any money, and who no. really cares if WhatsApp yeah. makes money because, because it's they have by connections. Yeah, right. It doesn't <laughs> matter that WhatsApp doesn't make any money. They really but don't care. That's what but, I'm trying to understand, though. Like, what, what is the purpose to even keep BBM going if it's not money? And it doesn't seem like that there is directly money in this category. It, it, they cost them about $100 million just to keep the infrastructure around. But if you think about it, BBM Protected is on an annual subscription of $30-plus, depending on how many so users, it's, how it's many people. It's enterprise it's, it's, sale. It's enterprise sale attached with Bez as part of, you know, and it's layered on as part of the services now. When we think about the BlackBerry Experience Suite and we think about how they can leverage that in the enterprise, that's where they're making the money. But again, it's a negligible amount, right? I bet stickers and BBM Protected probably made about the same amount, which is, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's just sad fact. And as well with the, the issues they had with the vendor portal and those payments going out, I'm sure, you know, somewhere on the back end, there's probably some vendors that they had who might have been dissatisfied as well. So we really don't know what the catalyst is going to be next for BBM. Is it a new feature going to come out or just a different way of selling? No, yeah, no, I think you bring up a good point because like during the earnings call, something that, you know, during the Q&A portion, someone asked Chen a question about, um, he's like, I just want to, you know, verify this. So you're saying that the hardware, you know, you guys didn't do exactly what you're hoping or expecting to do, but software is primarily the business, right? So you're, you're like, you know, primarily going to be a, you're primarily right now a software company. That's where most of the revenue and profit came from, and the hardware is just kind of there. So you could get rid of the the hardware, correct? And Chen was kind of like, uh, at first he was kind of like, no, but yes, but like, yes, okay, we were primarily software. Uh, the hardware we could just exit off, especially if it's not making money. But he said that in a lot of our enterprise sales, the the hardware is nice to have because we do bundle it together and it helps with the sale. So if we were to just X off hardware, that would actually hurt our sales process a little bit. 
So I think that's the same yeah, thing with BBM. They're removing, a, they're, they're removing an endpoint at that point, right? Yeah. Like they, don't, they no longer have that in the equation. And, and I, I mean, we could bounce back and forth about whether or not BlackBerry is going to exit hardware at any given point in time, but it doesn't really matter because it doesn't seem as though that it's something that they want to do. Yeah. If, if it really comes down to it and it becomes something that is in the shareholders' best interest to be able to go ahead and get rid of that hardware, then yeah, Chen, and Chen is open to actually going ahead and getting rid of it. But I think a lot of people are concentrating too much on like the end of hardware when really that's not necessarily the case. Like Chen wants to keep hardware going as long as possible. No, just having the connect, <laughs> just having the sheer connections in a hardware business, like overseas connections, everything like that. Because now talking about radar, right? Like they're building this hardware. Well, imagine having no hardware connection. Say BlackBerry got out of the smartphone game and they no longer had, you know, working with Foxconn and all these other different connections that they have. Having these connections allows them to get into other hardware a lot easier. For instance, radar. I'm sure they're yeah. using their existing connections and infrastructure to build these systems, and that's an advantage. So even if you know the smartphone is losing money, the physical hardware, you know, there's so much more to it than just the smartphone because, yeah. yeah. It, you can you could argue that all day long, Alex, and and you know I mean I understand that there's people out there that get it, and then there's going to be constantly people who don't get it because. Mm -hmm. As we as we as we seen right after the earnings report, there was a you know a crap ton of articles that went up about Chen's comments on exiting hardware immediately. Yeah. Like it's ridiculous that it, that has to happen. But you know, at the same time, I understand why it happens too because Chen has been very very upfront about the possibility of it actually happening. Like he even said, like he knows that he takes crap for saying it. So yep. yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's definitely just a very, very critical quarter for them. And I think it, it's a lackluster one because at the end of the day, I think expectations were even higher. I think people want to see BlackBerry succeed. I think they underestimate how long that's really going to take. And I think it kind of it plays back into the hardware conversation. It plays back into the IoT conversation. And it kind of trickles down to this place where BlackBerry still is stopping the bleeding, right? Service dude, the service access fees, dude, are, st are still falling. Yeah. You know, they <laughs> haven't they haven't bottomed out yet. So, you know, I think BlackBerry has done a lot to kind of slow gravity's natural chorus, right? As they pulled this company down. But at the end of the day, I think they're they're gonna hit this point. And John Chen mentioned it by September. We're gonna have hardware where it needs to be. I expect us to be profitable by September or at least break even. And again, how you manage that is really controlling the fall and taking that momentum and then using it as a catalyst to the rise. But that, that takes a lot of juggling. And I think that's why John Chen is like, whatever, BBM. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm dealing with such bigger pieces than just BBM right now that I really need to focus on the core of what this company is doing so that it can keep it going. As this transition continues to happen, we're going to see BlackBerry stay in the hardware business. And I'll tell you why. It's totally at this point, I think, a perception thing. I, I really believe that. I think oh, yeah. at the end of the day, they need to stay in hardware, not not only as Alex said, for their for their connections, right? So that they have those channels and distribution and partnerships, you know, on tap. But I think from a perception standpoint, Blackberry doesn't need a success. They need to stay alive. They need to keep going. They need to survive. And right now we're still in that mode, right? where we're still working with a patient here and we're still nursing them back to health slowly but surely. And at the end of the day, I think John Chen is wholly focused on making sure he can hit those short-term targets to build on that better future. But it's just going to take time. What do you guys think about the delay of two OS releases for the BlackBerry Priv and BlackBerry 10.3.3? Can we consider them delays? I mean, they were pretty upfront with those dates, which I thought was kind of interesting from the jump because they're usually never that open with dates that early, you know? I'm less concerned about the proof one. Like, the proof one is, eh, whatever. Um, I mean, as as I'm sure we'll get to, we know that they have a beta starting up anyways, which will help, you know, keep people from actually freaking out a little bit too much. Um, but when it comes down to 10.3.3, even though it is only just the NIAP certification, I mean, they said March. They should have, they should have strived to actually have it you know, ready for March, not June, 
not yeah. mid June. Like, yeah, I feel like that was a they, really significant pushback. Yeah. Like it's not just a month or half. Like that's you know June, April, May, June. And um, Chen Chen likes it. He basically he laid it upon the the people who have to offer up the NIAP certification, which you know I get that. I mean he's bound by some of their things, but at the same time, you know, if you knew that was going to be a problem or if you even had an inclination that that would be a problem, then why not submit the process earlier so that you could override that problem, you know? It just seems like a little bit silly. Like, he was so upfront about actually saying that March date and then it becomes mid-June and that, that, that really... I don't know, that really that really hurts people when when you when you are up front and you're actually you know putting it out there and you say yes we're gonna have this ready for March and then it gets pushed to mid June it becomes problematic at that point and like I said I understand the problems I understand the the situation but that still doesn't change how people are gonna feel about it right yeah Brandon Brandon is crying on the inside because his passport <laughs> doesn't have ten dot three dot three on it yet yeah. I mean, the, the, and again, as, as Blaze, you said it perfectly, right? It's only the NIAP certification, which yeah, to I mean, us d- doesn't even phase, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's that's, literally that's just... the cop out answer. It's like, it's only NIAP certification. It means nothing to, like, the majority of customers, right? But mm-hmm. what, I, what I find interesting is them at least doing the NIAP certification. I think one of the second, second, first phone I think that was NIAP certified was a Samsung Knox device, and then an LG G3, the 4 and subsequent devices. So it's not like BlackBerry is the first smartphone to ever be NIAP certified. So clear the air of that. What I think is interesting is that they're updating the entire operating system to that level. And I think that's what John Chen misunderstood or potentially didn't anticipate, right? Because he was like, we're going to bring the entire OS to a NIAP certification level where most vendors bring like one device, one OS to NIAP certification. And BlackBerry's got a lot of BB10 devices. So if they're going to get the entire lineage of the OS updated with NIAP certification, it's going to take a little bit longer. And that's probably this time delay that we're seeing now. But I, I totally agree with Blaze. If, if you're going to set up that kind of expectation, you need to do everything you can to hustle and make it. Darius, do you, are you, you upset about that NIAP certification, bro? No, nah, not really. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Joe, I mean uh, it's just... You got you got any buddies on on BB10 that are like stressing right. over that 10.3.3? Right. Sorry, but not sorry. You know what I mean? Because it's just it, you you hate to say like, oh, you want to say so much that no BlackBerry is not abandoning BlackBerry 10, and then you get this news, and it's like, oh, so they're not black, they're not abandoning BlackBerry 10. I don't know, man. It's just it really sucks though, because as much as I love BlackBerry 10, I love the platform, and you root for it, you want it to succeed so much. As far as in, you know, the mobile OS software space is just, it's like it has no legs underneath of it. You know what I mean? It, it has nothing going for it in this right here. It's just kind of one of those events that kind of solidify that. But at the same time. Be happy, you know, it's coming. It's kind of like with Marshmallow for Android. I don't want to, you know, go get ahead, but it's just a simple fact, like, you wish you had it earlier, but at least you know it's coming. You know what I mean? And so yeah. <laughs> you got to keep that hope alive, and that's just pretty much what it is. I mean, it's like you're waiting for an OS update, but what is that OS update really going to do for you? You're not getting any outstanding features. You're not about to get, like, this huge amount of apps or something like that that is going to, like, revive BlackBerry 10. It's not doing anything, so... Who cares if it's pushed back to June? To be honest with you, you're not. Yeah. Getting, you're not. It's not. You're not going to benefit. You're not getting anything that you're benefiting from at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, the optimistic way to look at it is, yay, your devices are supported until like 2017. <laughs> right. yeah. it just, I mean, it sucks, but you really just have to look at it like that. And there's so many people that are so passionate about BlackBerry 10, and I, we we all equally are. But it's just at the end of the day, some of them just have to kind of come to existence and accept reality that, you know what, it's really on its last leg, and we're not telling you to jump ship right now. Use it, you know. I put on my Z30 just yesterday, and I was like, man, I love this device. But, you know. I hear you, man. I hear you. I look at my passport, I feel the same way. Right. It's mm-hmm. just, it's what it is, you know, and I mean, it's, like I said, just be glad it is coming. You know, it could have said, no, we're nixing it, and then it would have been like, oh, my God, you know, like a whole another world of, you know, just negativity, so to speak, but, you know, June, it'll be here, you know, just wait, just write it out, it's okay. It's kind of so, sad, because I pick up my passport every day, and and use it, and 
I actually tried to go back to use the passport. Um, <laughs> I lasted, I lasted a week, um, but I did miss like the flow, and and proper hub compared to the hub yes. on the Priv. Yeah, the hub. And, oh. and I miss like just being on top of messages as opposed to yes, the DJ, DJ. I so under with on Android, I feel disconnected from my notifications. Oh. Where Definitely. on the BlackBerry 10, it just it's easy to just respond to Alex. When nor on my priv, I roll my eyes and I cry a little bit inside when I get a notification from Alex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And on BlackBerry 10, it was seamless. It's like let me just let me just placate him real quick, shoot off a message, boom. I yeah. Get it. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. There's a lot. I, you know, I really want a silver edition, but it's like, do I really want to spend money on oh, on, B, on a BB10? So nice. On a BB10 device, though, you know? It's like, it's not even, like, I love the hardware. Don't get me wrong, right? That's great. I have a passport already. I don't need another one, right? I've got too many BlackBerry 10 devices as it is. So it, it's really just a pain point for me to really kind of make that decision happen. Uh, what are your thoughts on some of the OS-related news, DJ? Do you think these, like, you know, as a, as a user yourself, do these delays, do they affect you too much? Uh, what's your sentiment on them? No, I mean, it's exactly what Darius is saying. There isn't anything new or groundbreaking. And I think it's just because, as Black Pretend users, we just want to see something moving forward. And so, you know, we want to see something new, even if it doesn't bring anything new. It's It's an update. So it feels like it feels new. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because you get an update and you just feel like oh something it's moving forward. It's not like floating away, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm 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 more looking forward to Marshmallow than ten point three point three. That's the real news, yes. and I think honestly, uh. Again, you don't want to. I don't want to move too. Far, I mean, move forward fast. But you know, John Chen, you know, speaking on wanting to give like that mid-range device. I think that will kind of bring a little bit more of those BlackBerry 10 users over to Android. But hopefully, with like the Marshmallow update, you will truly get. Um, I don't know. We're, we're kind of gonna get that yearning we've been waiting for because we. I think every Priv user should has been feeling like, man, I should have had this months ago. Like. I think February would have been great timing for Marshmallow, me personally, just a simple fact, because you have all the other OEMs dropping their new flagship devices. So when they're dropping these new devices and their old flagship devices already have Marshmallow, we just feel like that much behind. And I don't know. I don't understand. It's like you, you speak. BlackBerry speaks on how they are implementing on being such a, a software company, but yet you're so slow when it comes to software um, for your latest device. And okay, there's, there's, okay, I, I, to, I, 100 million percent agree with you. And then there's the argument that I keep seeing online where people are like, "Well, you buy a BlackBerry device for security, so like you're getting very quick security patches. You should be happy about that. That's what you should be happy about." And it's like, yeah, that's great, but exactly what Darius is saying. Like, they are a software company, and you have all these other competitors. And I understand that, like, maybe you don't want to be the first one to introduce. Android N, for instance. You might want to let it settle for a bit and see the bugs that happen. Maybe there's some huge vulnerabilities in there that you want to wait maybe three or four months before implementing it. But Marshmallow's been out for a very long time now. It's, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine, it's ten months. It's been out since October. The Priv came out in November, so it was November, right? So yeah. my whole thing is, is that you should have been working on, as soon as Marshmallow dropped, you know you had Priv devices on hand that you were yeah. testing. So you should have been putting Marshmallow on the device right then and there, saying that come the 1st of 2016, we want this update out there so we can say we're already on board. We're ahead of the other OEMs that are have you know their flagship devices and we'll be readying those uh, devices for the Marshmallow update. But not only that, it's just like BlackBerry has a reputation for ruining their own experience for their devices and, and products. And yeah. it's like, what, what point do you say enough is enough? Let's get on board. Let's just stay ahead of the game. It's, as, as I mentioned, like now that you have the Galaxy S7 um, that's out there, you have HTC's new black, um, flagship devices dropping as well as LG's is out there. They're already on Marshmallow. And you have your latest flagship out, and it's not, it doesn't have it yet. And then you're going to beta test it. You yeah. already put, you always put things out that are half baked. So you yeah. may as well just put Marshmallow out half baked, update the hell out of it. <laughs> just keep it yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> half baked marshmallows <laughs> are not cool. I would, <laughs> That's I would how I like them. Marshmallow 
that is ass on my device. But at the end of the day, you're supporting it continuously by giving me the updates I need, and you're making it better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't want to just be sitting here with Lollipop. They came out two years ago. Yeah. And it's still – it's buggy as hell. Like, it still feels half-baked. Half well, but that's the thing. Lollipop as an OS is half-baked. Yeah. The marshmallow is the fix to Lollipop. So that's that's the even more frustrating aspect to it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it has yeah. – it already has implemented security features. That was the biggest – that was like the highlight of Marshmallow was yep. that Google had added. So I'm trying to figure out why BlackBerry has such a hard time with the software release. I don't get it. You know, I, I just don't get why they have such a hard time. With, is, do they have like one team that's working on Marshmallow and 10.3.3? I, I don't get it. Like, it really is. <laughs> I don't know what you can cut set, but hire another team. Somebody that here's, dedicate their time to this and dedicate their time to that and make it happen is just... Here, here's my theory, Darius. Here's my theory. I think they accidentally let those people go and they're like, oh, crap. <laughs> we can't build Blackbird 10 anymore. Let me go hire those people back. Um, you want to intern with us? We have a great... No. <laughs> they, they definitely have dedicated people for that stuff, right, from yeah. the security perspective and all that. But I, I, I get it. You know, When we've talked with BlackBerry and we've heard some of the... The pain point is always the carriers. It's always the carriers. Oh, and you know what? I don't, I'm, t I'm really tired of like the carriers getting blamed because at the end of the day, I really don't think it's the carriers. I think if you're giving a device, it's definitely AT and T, man. I don't. I don't. <laughs> Verizon. To, to what extent though? Because you see, okay, you see Samsung have all of these releases on Marshmallow. Like their S5, for instance, I think just got yeah. Marshmallow, and yeah. it's like so whoa, you can blame whoa, whoa, the carriers whoa. as much as you want, but Obviously, other hardware manufacturers are getting it out. So does that mean that they just implemented it two months earlier than you, BlackBerry? Oh, you let's not, what are the not, other let's not be so quick to go ahead and praise fucking Samsung for anything, okay? Because oh, they no, have like I'm saying it's ridiculous, and they probably have it for like two devices, maybe four at maximum, okay? BlackBerry is one device, and they don't have it for one. They're, right, they're, but they're zero. One I mean, is secure, totally, the other isn't, Alex. Yeah, I totally get what Darius is saying, and I can absolutely relate to it. Like, I understand the frustration there, but at the same time, you have to give credit to BlackBerry for rolling out the security updates and maintaining them. Oh, I do, them. dude. We do. Totally. Oh, yeah. I, I don't take anything away from that. I... Uh, I'll, Standingly, like, applaud them for their security updates. I They're really, doing it better than Nexus, and dude. I think, like, honestly, if you ask me, they have no choice but to be putting out those security updates because that's what they build their reputation on. Is yes. so if they weren't putting them out monthly, then that says a lot about your brand and what you, you know, kind of say for yourself. But at the end of the day, I just feel like you're ruining my experience with this device, <laughs> that's highly priced, and I don't want to say. I'm not gonna go on. I'm not even gonna say it. It's just the point of the fact is you need to deliver marshmallow. And if you're gonna do the beta, then cool. I think you should do the beta. And, that, and uh, Chris, you have made a point as well that actually kind of keeps people uh, very optimistic about the priv and can oh, and moving yeah. forward. And it's gonna give it that longevity in the long run as well to kind of keep it like a another uh, a keep it a device that you can keep around for another year and not just one because you find so many people upgrading every year, especially with all the yeah. carriers you know provide for people. You know, people don't hang on to a device no more than a year or maybe a year and a half. But I think with Marshmallow, and especially if, like, you know, Android in releases and BlackBerry yes. is kind of faster that time around with that, um, with the release of that software update, then I really think you can keep the preview mm -hmm. because the specs uh, with the 808, I, I don't know. I was just, uh, I've been reading online. People talk about mid range phones, and the 808 doesn't come up as mid range specs. It's still looked at as more high end. You know, and I think when you give it three or four gigs, it really can take you, you know, far within the future as a great handset. So uh, I think BlackBerry, they have a great device in their hands. I just think you have to make the experience great, especially when you already did it from the jump by keeping it, you know, kind of stock Android that really saved face for a lot of things and not loaded up with bloatware like the other companies do. Yeah. I'm going to need BlackBerry to take the productivity edge out of my screenshots. Thank you. That's all. Good night. Yes, but James, <laughs> just, to save, just disable it at this point. Seriously. I hate you. Yeah. I hate you. Oh. So I want to I transition here to close out some of our dialogue, and I want to talk about Blaze and, and Mr. Cluely putting out some hints that, you know, and I don't know if it was an April Fool's joke. You never know these days. But um, uh, I don't Marshmallow, think Marshmallow beta test for Priv. 
So we talked a little bit about you know that a beta test may be available. Blaze put out a good tweet. Do you remember what that tweet was in relative to the uh, the marshmallow beta test? Look, man, I'm lucky I remembered to put on pants when I went to the store today. So you tell me what this tweet was. <laughs> <laughs> to update your beta zone profiles. Oh, if yeah, you yeah, haven't yeah. already. If you were a previous BB10 user or previously you were involved in those beta things, update your information for Priv. Uh, at least let them know you have a Priv, right, at the very least, uh, to get that information updated. They actually edited the profiles a couple months back, and there's actually more now. So there's, like, technology questions, lifestyle questions, and things like that. So definitely go ahead and, uh, you know, talk about, uh, you know, update update the beta zone profile, some of those bits. Michael's tweet was, I'd like to talk about the Priv Marshmallow beta today, but given the tape are fools, you might not believe me, so I won't. <laughs> so we'll have to have to wait till next week. So hopefully we get some more information on that. I'm definitely, you know, I'm I'm ready to go. I will roll with the beta like it's nobody's business. It's funny because you know once Marshmallow comes out, we're gonna all want Android N, and then <laughs> this, the cycle continues, right? I definitely think it's good at least that Blackboard's kind of pulled back from having those development responsibilities because. You know, just like the Hero 10.3.3, you know, how reliable were they in really bringing those in a timely manner anyway, right? There's a lot of work to get those updates out there. A question, do you think that, do you think there would be anything wrong with having an open beta? So, like, look at Windows 10. That was an open beta because it's useful when you have that many people using it. Um, I feel like they should just do the thing, like, like they did with Android N. It's like, if you're a developer or if you're an enthusiast, then install this. If you're a, if you're running a business and everyone is relying on this for business, maybe hold off. Uh, I, I don't necessarily... I feel like, like, I feel like people don't read those betas. disclaimers, though. No, you know? nobody yeah, reads but those disclaimers. It causes BlackBerry headaches when they're like, my phone's not working! Yeah. But I, I do agree, an open beta would make a lot of sense. But yeah. because it's, you know, it's something that they're going to throw an autoloader at us that securely boots, and, you know, what kind of implications does that have? Regardless, I, I'm interested to see you know, what kind of changes, because Blaze posted a video on Crackberry with, you know, someone hands-on with the Priv, with Marshmallow, and basically zero changes, at least visually, right? It basically looks the same. There's a lot of that under-the-hood stuff, those fixes on Lollipop that we were looking for. Yeah. And I, I think, have a question. I think DTAC will actually become a little bit more useful, too. Mm -hmm. also, oh, it'll I'm actually be a gonna, useful app. I'm going <laughs> to take this opportunity to say, I told you so, because I knew that beta was coming. <laughs> so I told yeah. you so when I actually posted in the forums. I was like, would you guys be interested in a beta? That yeah. was my hint that, hey, there's a beta coming, so I told you so. <laughs> James, you mentioned that uh, to update your profile, though, for the beta. For the past eight months, maybe, when I go to beta.webapps.blackberry.com, I just get a redirection loop. Well, um, that's why you go to blackberry.com forward slash beta. I'm going to try that right now. Yeah, I thought it was like, yeah, what are you doing, Alex? Alex, don't oh, know what's going on. It, it's the top yeah, result Alex, in Google. Beta zone, cash. Blackberry beta zone. <laughs> it's, that's the that's the URL. I just get a redirection loop, and I've got I've tried to log into here for a long time, and I tried different browsers. All right, well, well, his tweet was clearly not for you, Alex. You're a liar, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad. But it, DJ but knows blackberry.com forward slash beta. I'm there. It, it's beta dot Yeah, yes. but I'm able to. No, log but in. if you type in blackberry.com forward slash beta, I've just managed to log in. What browser? Sorry, this is totally Chrome. after show stuff. I can't get in Chrome. Okay, whatever. Well, whatever, we Alex. We have an after show, Alex. Also, right. also, just just to Darius's point, like he's um, maybe it was Darius. Forgive me if it wasn't, but it was like the comment about possibly BlackBerry will end up rolling Android N out faster because of the fact that they, you know, they've integrated, they're getting used to it and everything. And I totally believe that's probably going to be the case because when they launched Priv, they launched it with Lollipop. Now they're going through the process. They started their marshmallow rollout, uh, or they will be eventually anyway. Um, but I think when it comes down to it, I think you'll see Android N come to any applicable BlackBerry device faster than what you saw Marshmallow because Marshmallow at that point in time, they BlackBerry was stepping into the process while Marshmallow had already essentially been rolled out to OEMs and stuff like that. So they didn't they didn't necessarily have the appropriate amount of time to be able to go ahead and add all of their essential goodies directly to Marshmallow, which is probably why we're seeing a little bit of lag time with them. However, 
they've already started the process. They're in communication with Google. All of that good stuff is happening behind the scenes. We know that because, you know, as, as was mentioned earlier, they're, they're rolling out Google updates faster than what Google is actually rolling them out at this point in time in certain scenarios anyways. So I think when it comes down to it, you'll see Android N roll out to any applicable BlackBerry devices faster than what Marshmallow did. So they're, it's kind of like they were stepping in that process in the middle of things already that were already in play. So now that they're a big player in that arena, they'll be able to go ahead and get Android N pushed out faster and, you know, that's going to hopefully progress into any other devices that they have. Like John Chen said, that mid-range device that's coming out, hopefully that will receive Marshmallow, or sorry, Android N faster than any of the other devices that they previously have, or whatever the case may be. I think it was all just a, a, a not necessarily bad timing thing, but it, it was stuff that was already in process that BlackBerry didn't necessarily have a handle on. So when it comes to updates, I think they'll get better at it than any of the other OEMs in the long term because of the fact that they'll have the opportunity to be a part of that actual process this time around. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I was, and I mentioned that I just, you know, that I do feel like Android N will definitely come out a bit faster than Marshmallow will. And another thing is just with, I like what Google did when they released the Android, you know, um, in for developers. They releasing it early, I think is great because not only does it allow um, Google to allow the developers to kind of get an early hands-on to, to what they expect, you know, know what to, they have to work with, but that also gives, you know, the other OEMs to, you know, say, all right, we know what we got coming so we can give our customers, our consumers, you know, the best experience with this version of the software. Um, so for BlackBerry, definitely having their feet just getting wet in the Android um, game, I think it can also allow them to help deliver better Android devices further down the road as well. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think with Marshmallow, I think they're, I don't think they're going to, you know, I'm, we've already said that it's not too much that Marshmallow is really going to bring. It's just added security features, a lot of under the hood things. I think with Android in, um, I mean, it's a bit of the same thing, but it adds so many other features to connect with other devices as well. So, that kind of keeps me optimistic as far as what BlackBerry kind of wants to do because they have so much room that they can play with in the Android space, especially like delivering a, another tablet, so to speak. You know, um, excuse me, uh, it's just a, a tons of things that they can a do. A tablet, excuse you. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> but, I, mean, I, I'm serious. And I, I would like to see BlackBerry like bring an Android tablet. I, I really would like to see I'd, that. I'd like to see BlackBerry make money. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I just really like to see them bring their own branded tablet um i don't want it to be you know just uh enterprise you know kind of uh specific you, you wanted to see you know roll out to co um, consumers you know or like uh, you just really you want to see blackberry really prosper with the android devices but i want to see you know more devices i just know like right now with money and i read something earlier as well too with people like why is it blackberry delivering you know these devices a lot faster and so on and so forth but it really is. It does come down to money because they have to look at it within these fiscal years and then within the quarters. They have to see how much money that they have and how much money they have to spend. And inside these quarters, they have to say, okay, this is our quarter that we're going to use to spend that money on making these new devices in order to deliver them in this quarter or mm -hmm. at the end of the new fiscal year. And some people don't keep that in mind that they're really tight. Yeah, their, bu their budgets, their budgets have to stretch. You so know, they sometimes. have to understand, like you, they have planned quarters when they spend money to build new devices, which is why we don't get them as fast as, as we as fast as we do. And it all goes back into, you know, John Chen really wanting to keep up the hardware division, um, you know, going. It, it's really something that he's passionate about. But at the same time, he knows that I can't keep trying to set aside this money and put it into devices, and I'm not making it back when I know I can put it towards something else and double that and then possibly bring it back later in the future. You know, I mean, it's just a ton of things that kind of play inside of it, but not to get off subject with, with uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Marshmallow thing. I really do look forward to, Marsh, um, to Marshmallow. I'm really looking forward to the beta thing. If, if, if it comes to fruition, um, I think it will be good for the uh, consumers, and I really hope they just don't limit it. I hope it's something everyone could use. Um, yeah. That way, they can kind of get a hands-on, know what's up, to, um, what's you know to come, 
And I think that they, only, they only sold six hundred thousand devices, so they can't have that big of a beta. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think it's gonna be a half baked beta either. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I think it's gonna be the real for a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, honestly, I I believe that they're only they're only doing it in a beta stage, so that number one, they can catch a few bugs, but also to basically placate those people that are are, are like, where is our update? Where is our update? I at this point in time. You know, that, that video of the Priv running Marshmallow was actually, like, it was, like, three or four weeks old. So yeah. BlackBerry is already deep into their their own particular beta testing. If anything, they're doing, they're, they're realistically just putting out this beta to be nice to the Priv owners who simply cannot wait, which, you know, is is a good thing. All I like them. that. And, yeah. <laughs> well, oh, yeah I, I don't want them to just give it to those who purchase the phone through Shop Blackberry because of the whole carrier relations. Like that's my biggest thing. And yeah, I, let me let me get that file and do it myself. And for I sure. think it's gonna piss a lot of people off if that comes down to it. You know, especially yeah. for AT and T users. It's just that oh, the only ones that can beta test it is those who purchase from Shop Blackberry. Like really, I know I would be. I'm gonna go to Waterloo and. Never mind, never mind. <laughs> so I want to close our podcast out. It's been about an hour and a half. I'm going on and on about radar and marshmallows and half-baked this or that. Uh, to celebrate leap year, February 29th, so about a month ago, yeah, about a month ago, we had a contest for a white black bear leap on Very Flow. I was going to announce it on the 31st, but I decided we have upstream in a couple of days shortly thereafter, so I'm going to announce our winner right now. And I actually don't know who the winner is. I have a bunch of names and a hat, and I'm actually going to pull one, and we're going to see who wins. Uh, we got about 135 different comments and entries, and of course our patrons were lumped in there as well. So maybe it's someone, uh, maybe someone I know, maybe someone I don't. Alex, I know you commented. Uh, maybe it's you. We don't know. Is this, an, is this an e-hat, or you physically have a hat next no, to you? No, I like, legit have my hat. Old school. Names and Old schools. So, let's see, what in, let's see what we got in here. Some of these are like folded in on one another. Okay, let's see. Let's see. John Chen. John <laughs> Chen. No, no. Let's see here. He's a passport user. <laughs> Pat. Thorsten Hines. Pat. Tor Pat. Let's see who Pat is. Who's one of our commenters here? It would be fun if he was watching, but probably. That'd be great. Pat, Pat, you are watching right now. You've won a BlackBerry Leap. Uh, I wish it ran Android. I'm sorry it doesn't. But uh, we're going to be getting that out to you. I've just got your, your email address here. We'll shoot that out to you a little bit later for some of your shipping info. As well, if you continue to watch these podcasts and want to support us, check us out at berryflow.com forward slash Patreon. We're repping the shirts right now. If you check out my BBM channel, I am doing some great BlackBerry marketing. Please forgive me if you do see that and don't appreciate it. Uh, and a happy birthday to DJ once again. Great to have you on, DJ. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, DJ. Thank you. The gang got all together for DJ's birthday. It's a beautiful <laughs> thing. Next week, we will be talking a little bit more. Hopefully, we get some news about some potential uh, actual beta coming out for the Priv. But until then, guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you next time. Peace. Later. Bye. Later, Gators. It's all a while. Crocodiles.